Over the next 10 minutes, I'd like to give you a brief overview of our most recent work titled Action Dark Matter from Frictional Misalignment. The basic idea behind this work is to modify the traditional um, action misalignment mechanism for non-thermal generation of action dark matter in the presence of additional friction. This has been a collaboration among the three people depicted on my first slide. In the middle is Pablo Quiles, who is a postdoc at DESI and soon to be a postdoc at UC San Diego. On the right is Kai Smits, who when we started our collaboration was a postdoc at CERN and is since a professor at the University of Munster. And I'm on the left, and I'm a postdoc at the Institute for Basic Science in Korea. A few words are in order about the traditional action misalignment mechanism. We're assuming a pre-inflationary scenario for the scale of Petsche Queen symmetry breaking. And right after inflation, the axion acquires a homogeneous value. Um, during radiation domination, the axion follows its equation of motion, which is equation uh, number one. And at early times, when the Hubble rate is very high, the Hubble friction dominates over the mass of the axion. And when that happens, the axion is frozen at its initial value. At later times, when the Hubble friction becomes approximately equal to the mass, the axion is released and starts oscillating around the bottom of the potential. And from that point on, it behaves approximately as dark matter. So what, just, what I just described qualitatively, you can compute exactly. And uh, the result of this computation is formula three which uh, yields the dark matter abundance as it would be observed today. The result of this formula is uh, the black line in the MAFA plane where the horizontal axis is the mass of the axion and the vertical axis is the action decay constant. And the black line is the line for which the action dark matter abundance is the observed one. Every point above the black line would yield too little dark matter and every point below the black line would yield too much dark matter compared to the observed one. The blue line is the QCD axion line, meaning it's the line for which uh, one can solve the strong CP problem of QCD. And there's a single point for which the black and blue lines uh, cross. And this is the unique point for which the QCD axion can make up the entirety of dark matter. So this is the standard picture, picture of the axion misalignment mechanism. And we're aiming to modify it by assuming the coupling of the axion to some dark non-abelian gauge field that forms a thermal bath of temperature T prime at early times. The idea is that strong sphaleron transitions in this hot thermal environment behave approximately as thermal perturbations of the topological charge and ultimately drain the kinetic energy of the axion. The overall effect can be captured by the inclusion of this additional term which uh, takes the form of a friction with um, a friction coefficient capital Epsilon, which is a function of the temperature of the dark thermal bath. The exact expression for uh, the friction coefficient Epsilon is given by equation seven, which is a, an equation that first appeared in the pioneering work of McLaren, Motola, and Saposhnikov back in the early nineties. This idea was recently revived by Berghaus, Kaplan, and Graham, who applied this uh, thermal friction idea for modifying inflation dark energy and early dark energy. Inspired by this work, we decided to use this thermal friction to explore possible modifications to the action misalignment mechanism for non-thermal generation of action dark matter. So what are the properties of this thermal bath? To cut a long story short, the temperature of this dark thermal bath compared to the temperature of the standard models needs to be constrained due to observations of light degrees of freedom at CMB scales. Uh, for SU3, we find an upper limit to the ratio of the temperature of the dark thermal bath to the temperature of the standard model of 0.86. And for our work, we will be saturating this limit. And we're evaluating this limit as some high temperature greater than the electroweak phase transition. At lower temperatures, this ratio evolves in a way that's well described by equation 10. So what is, what is the impact of this dark thermal bath and the equation of motion of the axion? Well, one impact occurs at early times and one at late times. So at early times, it changes the moment of the onset of oscillations. The onset of oscillation occurs when the slural solution breaks down. And that happens when the exponent of these two solutions become equal to one. The upper solution is for the case in which the Hubble friction dominates over the thermal friction. And equation 12 is the case in which thermal friction dominates over Hubble friction. The point is that the exponent has a different parametric dependence, hence the breakdown of slow roll and hence the onset of oscillation occurs 
for a different condition, depending on which friction dominates. At late times, the main change is that we need to derive a new adiabatic invariant, vari valid under the presence of friction. The expression for this adiabatic invariant is the same as the standard case, only it includes this additional factor. And computing this, computing this additional factor is the bulk of the calculational part of our work. I will not bore you with all the details. I'm going to show you the final result, which is equation 15. The final result can be broken down into three parts. One is the standard result. Then we have an additional suppression factor, and we also have an enhancement factor. To give you a brief understanding, for, for the enhancement factor and explain how either the enhancement or suppression factors can dominate over the other, uh, I will describe in detail this figure, which you should be looking at from right to left. So from high temperatures to low temperatures or from past to future. The blue line is the mass of the axiom that is increasing due to the instant effects. The yellow line is Hubble friction. And when the yellow and blue lines cross, we get temperature T1, which is the onset of rolling of the axiom in the conventional scenario. Instead, due to the presence of friction, we also have the green line, which is the additional friction. And the onset of oscillation, instead of occurring at temperature T1, it occurs at temperature T2. Therefore, we have a delay in the onset of oscillation. Because of this delay, we effectively increase the action dark matter abundance because we have the same energy as we originally would have had but uh, the onset occurs later. So we save the dilution that would have occurred between, between temperatures T1 and T2. From temperature T2 and onwards, the uh, energy of the axon is rapidly and exponentially diluted. The idea is that we can separate these two effects, enhancement and, and dilution, by assuming spontaneous symmetry breaking. If spontaneous symmetry breaking occurs between temperatures T1 and T2, we get the enhancement without paying the price of the dilution. So what I, the machinery that I just described, we have uh, adapted for two particular models. In the first case, we have uh, a single gauge group that gives rise to the mass of the axiom through instant effects and friction through Spalheron transitions. To cut the long story short, uh, the basic conclusion from this model is that the computation of the standard misalignment mechanism becomes unreliable for axiom masses of 10 to the 2 EV and greater. This is the threshold be beyond which the inescapable, inevitable friction becomes important, around 10 to the 2 EV. Beyond that point, the calculation cannot be done reliably because we don't have a good understanding for the Svalbard rate at intermediate values of the coupling. So th these are just two example possibilities for how the um, action dark matter abundance could change for masses greater than 10 to the 2. The other possibility we consider is the case of the axion coupled to um, different gauge groups, one of which provides the action with a mass, and it's represented by the first term, and one of which provides the action with friction, which is represented by the second term in equation 17. We have also included the possible presence of a lambda, of lambda, which is uh, an enhancement parameter, which represents a hierarchy between the two couplings. In the conventional scenario, this should be equal to one. However, uh, we will consider very high, very high values of lambda, which can be justified by UV completions such as alignment or the clockwork mechanism. Again, to cut a long story short, um, figure three denotes the result of our, uh, of our computation. And what we show is lines of constant en enhancement parameter lambda. These values of lambda denote the minimum possible value of lambda that can uh, make the relevant parameter space compatible with the observed dark matter abundance. They are essentially the minimum values of lambda that can open up the corresponding parameter space. And specifically, uh, as you can see, through our mechanism, we can open up both the overabundant as well as underabundant part of the parameter space. What happens to the QCD axion? For the QCD axion, there are two important differences. Uh, the first difference is that the product MA times FA is given in terms of standard model parameters as opposed to the conventional scenario in which it is just a confinement scale squared. And that induces a, an order one correction to everything that I showed you before. The second modification is that for the QCD axion, the only possibility is spontaneous breaking. We cannot consider, we cannot afford for the hidden sector to be confined, as in that case, the minimum of the potential would not be the CP conserving one. 
I'd like to conclude this pre presentation by mentioning that we coined the term for this mechanism frictional misalignment, and we hope to add it to a relatively short list of other possible modifications to the standard misalignment, to the standard misalignment mechanism, such as kinetic misalignment, trapped misalignment, and so on and so forth. Uh, you can pause this video and read the rest of my conclusion. I will simply say that um, the idea we propose is uh, very simple and it's based on a set of reasonable assumptions, which however have a profound impact in the final action dark matter abundance. Thank you for listening to my presentation.